is part of the mission karma yogi talks which is excellence in public service through digital transformation let me start the importance of an initiative like this skilled and motivated personnel with a passion for public service are arguably the most important asset and determinant of an effective government the indian civil services as we all know referred to as the india steel frame has contributed over the years immensely to the country's growth and development amidst a volatile social order in the nation's post independence however the developments in various fields of activity the growth of technology the rise of citizens aspirations and expectations and increase in disruptive events namely the infectious diseases climate change and extreme weather events economic volatility cyber attacks geopolitical conflict social cohesion erosion etc it calls for a fresh look at its entire structure of capability building and people empowerment so the mission karma yogi's vision is to bolster the indian civil services capacity building ecosystem by essentially establishing a robust digital framework it aims to equip the officials with the evolving knowledge and tools necessary in a collaborative way to excel in a world mired in uncertainty let me talk a little bit about the leadership we are at a time in the human history where we cannot afford to have a reactive approach to disruptive events leadership is now more about learning to cope with rapid change and ongoing uncertainty how ready are we in a world of unprecedented changes and expectations the reason being uncertainty is here to stay in spite of our efforts to dispel it the role of a true and effective leader is to replace the fear and doubt and unpreparedness associated with uncertainty with clearly purpose clarity strategy and proactive action i have always believed that people are the most valuable asset of any organization whether it is private sector government ngo or whatever sphere and therefore i have always placed a strong focus on essentially capability building in people capability with confidence and competency building and one has to emphasize a continuous culture of learning and improvement i also believe in an absolutely collaborative approach to any decision making where there is ample scope for what i call as empowered leadership the concept of empowered leadership is something that has been a key enabler in the efficient execution of numerous complex and large scale digital transformation projects that i have been a part of and i'd like to give some examples the idea behind empowered leadership is that a single individual is not burdened with the entire responsibility of effective leadership it is designed as a collaborative effort involving a team of people working together and essentially a team of people working together towards a common goal where everyone equally shares the vision responsibility and accountability to summarize what i have stated so far empowered and distributed leadership is the key and it can be achieved through shared responsibility involving a group of people who believe in a common goal and vision collaboration among team members where everyone brings his or her unique skills 
and expertise to the table enabling environment of respect trust and transparency empowering the individuals with opportunities to develop skills and competencies needed to cater to the changing demands of the role that's what i have summarized so far what i have spoken so let me touch upon a very critical aspect of india our country and digitization as you all know today technology is all pervasive the development and advancement and adoption of advanced technologies such as intelligent automation artificial intelligence machine learning 5g the metaverse blockchain quantum computing and so on are creating an impact on almost every aspect of our lives the hyper connected world is here and it's bringing with an acceleration of innovation and disruption every industry every function every government every one of us have to adopt the interruption and disruption without fear but with a single minded focus we are going to be working together for a common good or a common purpose digital democracy in a sense the next phase of democracy as it encompasses all the opportunities of asserting sovereignty for nation states the most important task in such an area is the construction of technological architecture as essentially a public good which is not owned by one single private entity and india has shown unique innovation skills in building and deploying such an architecture more importantly deploying such architecture at scale for more than a billion people and has achieved unprecedented success in enabling digital inclusion at all levels so when we look at india today and how the world sees us we are seen and regarded as a global leader in building population scale digital public goods india stack as we know it is an ambitious project to build a unique public digital infrastructure like aadhar upi digi locker which are all made presence less cashless and paperless services available and the potential for further innovation and digitization across sectors such as healthcare agriculture education logistics and governance where it is making an immense contribution through the digitalization again to summarize india stack is empowering people to innovate at scale by using public architecture as building blocks to create new value out of it the whole objective is to create new value out of it and continuously enhance through innovation and disruption it's driving affordability and accessibility of products when you democratize the whole country through a digital framework the access to public services affordable access to public services and equal opportunity for all whether its products and or services while critical component being preservation and protection of personal data and privacy so that's all the fundamental Now I want to quote some experience of mine with the digital transformation of multiple government entities in the country whether it's passport or the skill development in my 5 decades of experience I've had the opportunity to drive several digital transformation projects of the government and namely the passport seva project national skill development the state bank of india and digitization of the bombay at the national stock exchange the reason i'm quoting some of these are these were in a public private partnership some of them together some of them purely as project for contract 
but it involved technology, digitization, access, scale, and very complex processes that need to be simplified from a citizen's point of view. I mean, just to give an example of the Passport Seva digitization project, this was part of the National E-Governance Plan, where the company I used to work for, namely TCS, helped reimagine and transform passport services in the country. This we executed on what we call as a build, operate, own and transfer framework and the Ministry of, Edu and the Ministry of uh, External Affairs handles all the sovereign function whereas we set up and manage the Passport Seva Kendras which are called the facilitation centers. IT and non-IT infrastructure, end-to-end -end passport application, networking, portal, data center and disaster recovery operations, all these were functions which we handled. Today, just to communicate the scale to you all, we deliver services to citizens of our country from 93 Passport Seva Kendras located in 63 cities across the length and breadth of the country. The transformation also saw the design of a toll-free center offering support in 17 languages nationwide. I think the Passport Seva project simplified the availability of pa passport services to the Indian citizens across the globe. At the end of it, what we could establish was a citizen-friendly application system supported by a strong and a robust IT infrastructure that today provides passport services to 1.3 plus billion Indian citizens of which at least 32 million citizens live abroad. So you can appreciate the scale at which this was done, the uniqueness of our country in the digital ecosystem, how the scale was achieved in a partnership mode. I think uh, what happened as part of this mammoth transformation, multiple stakeholders were brought together, they were integrated, and the process completely re-engineered, essentially for a very fast throughput and change management administered by officials at various levels. So the bureaucracy, the ability to be of service to the citizens, there's accuracy, whether it was time, whether it was ease of doing business, and across multiple languages, multiple locations in the country, which I talked about, became a reality. Second one, which is the national skill development effort, where the vocational skills, including recognition of prior skills, and creating an ecosystem of skill building in the country where every single job, every single function of the economy is respected and recognition given through a combination of factors. One of them was what we called as the National Skill Development Framework and we created a number of institutional structures across the country. On this, I worked as the advisor to the Prime Minister of our nation. The sheer scale and scope of the National Skill Development Challenge was formidable. The challenge of harmonizing the efforts of diverse, diversified ministries, departments, state governments, central institutions, NGOs, industry-sponsored institutes in skill development space was essentially a massive scale in itself. In the process of meeting with the various ministries, vocational training providers, NGOs, funding agencies, the industrial training institutes or ITIs as they are called, that it came to a realization that all the existing challenges in skill development could in fact be managed through a distributed and empowered leadership model. As chairman of the National Skill Development Corporation, my focus was also to involve the industry in the skilling process. 
that was essentially and primarily aimed at jobs in the private sector. Sector skill councils for various sectors, whether it was healthcare, IT, IT enabled services, telecom, power, construction, handicraft, steel, hydrocarbon, etc., were incubated by NSDC for fostering industry connections and developing industry relevant curricula and courses. There are currently 37 sector skill councils operational with more than 600 corporate representatives on their governing councils. The sector skill council developed a competency framework and created over 200, over 2000 qualification packs and national occupation standards mapped to every job in a different industry and essentially leading to an outcome-driven skill development program. A similar exercise needs to be carried out in the civil services system in order to establish a robust and adaptable competency development model. To summarize, in any transformation project which has to be successful, it is imperative to define the roles and responsibilities for people and essentially empower them with the necessary skill and competencies. The feeling of a sense of ownership is what is the most important thing and that's what we focus on to how to empower the civil servants for common good. When I look at the result orientation, service delivery and stakeholder alignment, it is anticipated that citizen preferences and citizen behavior will continue to evolve in favor of digitally assisted modules or modes of engagement. More and more people want to access public services to be as convenient as what we do on an online shopping. If today you look at online shopping, it's a few clicks. We want to do the civil services transformation, ability to absorb, ability to communicate and be of assistance to the citizens through right competency is what we are attempting. We want to make sure the citizens can find quickly the most relevant services, want information in a clear and precise, simple language, and expect to complete all transactions via digital channels, ideally through a single digital journey. Let me talk about the result orientation, service delivery, and stakeholder alignment. When citizens, we need to anticipate have a number of preferences, and the citizen behavior in a digital transformation will evolve as we move along. We have to think of this whole initiative as the ease of doing business in an online shopping environment as an example. People want to be able to quickly find the most relevant services, want information in clear and simple language, and expect and complete all transactions via the digital medium, ideally through a single digital journey. A significant amount of development has already happened in this regard because the government has focused on the digital infrastructure development through what we call as the Jandan Aadhaar Mobile, the Jam Trinity, and of course the India Stack. The Digital India Stack is now, we are proud to say, is a global benchmark and provides a competitive advantage for solving population scale problems. The government has been progressively digitizing the services, the interface with citizens, and making it easier to get licenses, certificates, payment of taxes, registration of documents, and bringing in ease in the outcomes and efficiency as being one of the critical components. As you all know, the different services are owned by different departments of the government, whether it's the center or the state. 
different agencies and geographically spread units which have very strong legal independence. So it's necessary for the civil servants to learn informal collaboration within and across individual units as more and more public service journeys get digitized and simplified. I think the best approach to achieve stakeholder alignment is by what I call convening labs, each responsible for a specific journey. In this way of working, civil servants from all relevant public authorities can collaborate directly with citizens to essentially reimagine the experience and plan a phased release from minimal viable product to fully automated service transformation. The key word is the fully automated transformation, service transformation or transaction. Several initiatives are happening in silos. For example, the government of Maharashtra launched an AI-powered chatbot called Aple Sarkar Bot. The chatbot provides information and helps with queries on healthcare, education, public utilities, revenue and other public services. The government of Tamil Nadu launched an app called Uravan that helps farmers to diagnose the pest infection in their crops and provide them essentially with remedial measures. The government of Uttar Pradesh has deployed an AI-enabled video analytics platform which they call as Jarvis in prisons to monitor inmates through real-time footage from CCTV cameras across a vast network and then flag any segment that looks to contain unlawful activities. So what I'm trying to say is there is an essentially need to integrate new learning from such success stories and enhance the scope for interdepartmental collaboration, inter-region communication and collaboration. So to summarize, technology-led public services is an imperative. You achieve sustainable results, people must promote a culture of innovation, be able to articulate and advocate the benefits of design thinking to their teams and the public, and instill confidence in their team members, essentially to use technology to solve problems. A culture of collaboration with successful projects must also be promoted as there is absolutely no reason to reinvent the wheel. Let me get to the Mission Karma Yogi Compi development model, competency development model and the so-called iGOT platform. We all know Mission Karma Yogi is a transformative effort and an initiative launched with the aim of building future-ready civil services, the workforce that is information and data equipped, efficient, responsive, and citizen-centric. The vision of this mission is to empower civil servants with the emerging digital skills which are constantly changing knowledge and data to deliver effective services to the citizens. A data-driven services in a digital environment is the most powerful to scale and be the single moment of truth. The need of the hour is to embrace a culture of continuous learning and development with focus on inclusivity, sustainability and problem solving and foster a mindset of self-improvement and innovation. One of the key objectives of the Mission Karma Yogi is to create a common framework for capacity building across all levels of civil services ecosystem, from entry level officials to the senior most officers that are required for different roles to be performed. They will serve as a guide for identifying the core competencies required for different roles in every MDO, that is the Ministry, Department, Organization. This framework will help civil servants to understand their strengths and to identify the areas where they need to improve their skills and knowledge. On the other hand, 
The iGOT platform is a digital learning platform that will access and serve as a common platform for all capacity building needs of civil servants. The platform will leverage technology assisted multimodal and experiential learning interventions to essentially deliver personal learning experiences. The vision is to provide learners with guided learning and career development plans and paths to acquire competencies which matches their experience as well as aspirational goals. The platform seeks to create a vibrant ecosystem of learning resources training programs and technology tools that can enable civil servants essentially on a continuous basis to learn new skills and knowledge, more importantly at their own pace and in a manner that is most suitable to individual learning styles. It's not a compulsion, all of us have to come together, all of us have to learn at the same speed, all of us have to communicate at the same speed. But anywhere, any place, any time, any method, both physical and digital learning. So it's called the digital learning. The iGOT platform will also function as a hub for competency assessment, defining career goals and progression, promoting intra and interdepartmental networking and collaboration, discussion and brainstorming, and hosting of events. So what essentially happens is we are empowering every learner to be a knowledge contributor as well. You are not just taking from the system to learn, but you are also contributing to the knowledge management in whatever sphere, domain, technology you excel. I have personally seen the demo of the iGOT platform, and I feel this is an extremely important and a great starting point. As we keep developing it and more learners get onboarded, it will steadily progress on a path of maturity and eventually become a robust learning, a learning platform. This is a tried and tested path followed by several leading companies of India and the world is adopting a comprehensive digital competency development framework for their workforce. For instance, one of the largest IT consulting companies worldwide with 625,000 active learners has integrated such a platform to help over 80% of them to be agile ready and digitally trained at any time where 15% of the users log in every day to learn. So the scale is 625,000 learners and using the platform but more importantly continuing to use the platform on a daily basis so that they see the benefits of a continuous learning distributed learning and new learning as it emerges day in and day out. So to summarize, Mission Karma Yogi will essentially shift from a rule to role with competency framework, FRAC, framework of role, activities and competencies that will be linked with individual responsibilities and aspirations. There will be a competency passbook to track and measure the competency development efforts of each and every single personnel. I got will essentially function as a comprehensive learning, a learning platform enabling online, hybrid and experiential learning. So I want to bring a spirit of excellence and goal orientation. We all know no reform initiative can bring about lasting impact unless it brings 100% stakeholder consensus and internalization of that vision. When a public administration endeavor sets out to do something new, we have to start by creating awareness, knowledge dissemination, persuasion, advocacy, and counseling drive as applicable to ensure that each and every stakeholder of the government functionary is fully committed to the vision. The alignment to the total vision, how to bring in that behavioral change, 
how all of us adopt to a commonality of purpose, namely providing service to the citizen, is the key goal. And this goal orientation can be achieved by aligning the performance management system with different levels of growth indicators. For instance, national indicators to measure the progress towards achieving the national agenda and priorities, strategic indicators to measure organizational objectives, operational and performance indicators to measure and track progress of initiatives and under activities undertaken, enablers indicators to measure performance of support services and internal processes. So a balanced scorecard approach is a strategic management approach that provides organizations with a comprehensive framework for measuring and managing performance. The BSC or the Balanced Scorecard approach involves creating a set of key performance indicators or KPIs that align with the organization's strategic goals and objectives. So when we start measuring the KPIs and track it across defined parameters, the organization get a very holistic view of their goal orientation, performance and identify along the way the opportunities for improvement. This requires the leadership to allow more transparent and open communication to enable faster decision making and ensure that public service projects are more importantly driven by citizens' needs and not by institutional demands. So to summarize, an inclusive, entrepreneurial and network-oriented leadership style is what is needed so that you can take people along to realize that vision and provide them with measurable goals and KPIs to assess their own performance. It's not only the organization performance, but individual performance and how I'm progressing in this digital journey is key and very important. I think there are a number of learning structures and pathways. A federated learning structure is needed. Every MDO, namely the ministry, department, organizations, needs to have what I call learning leaders and the head of the departments who are driving this change. The learning leaders and HODs need to learn by example, which means they themselves have to learn and get certified and show their presence in every key program, have learning and contribution targets, track their metrics, and be accountable for a goal achievement. The end state has to be blended in experiential capability development, not compliance for completion of a set of online courses. I think it's the learning which is more important, not the certificate. Certificate is one of the components of incentivization or recognition, but the key recognition is, am I comfortable with the whole learning and the knowledge I have gained, which I can share. All methods of learning fearlessly must be explored and integrated, be it in-person boot camps, ideathons, simulations, gaming, role plays, proctored assessments, coaching, external certifications, group exercises, panel interactions, community discussions, internships, mentoring, and so on. The learning must also be assessed through demonstration of performance, not through just online evaluation. I mean, doing the job, going to the field, interacting with the citizens, interacting with the community is what I'm saying. So there has to be a curated full stack learning journeys for every role with the entire spectrum of capability development, which includes technical, functional, leadership, uh, program delivery, etc. And for this to be a sustainable, self-driven engine going forward, the capability development should include building mindsets of learning agility, curiosity, urge to rotate jobs periodically, customer centricity, outcome orientation, creativity, innovation, and most importantly, a sense of urgency. Role of technology is just is not just to offer a virtual content platform. It needs to be seen as a core of personalized yet scalable experience.
Let me touch upon the learning structures and pathways. A federated learning structure is needed. Every MDO, ministry, department, organization needs to have learning leaders and head of departments driving the change. The learning leaders and HODs need to lead by example, learn, certify and show their presence in every key program of learning and contribution targets, take their, track their metrics and be accountable for goal achievement. The end state has to be blended and experiential capability development, not compliance for completion of a set of online courses. All methods of learning need to be explored and integrated, whether they are in-person boot camps, ideathons, role plays, proctored assessment, coaching, external certifications, and group exercises panel interactions, community discussions, internships, mentoring, and so on. I think the learning must also be assessed through demonstration of competency and not just through an automatic online evaluation. There has to be curated full stack learning journeys for every role with the entire spectrum of capability development which includes technical, functional, leadership, program delivery, etc. And this requires the leadership to be more inclusive and there has to be a curated full stack learning journeys for every role with the entire spectrum of capability development this for being a sustainable self-driven engine going forward, the capability should include building mindsets of learning agility, curiosity, urge to rotate jobs periodically, customer centricity, outcome orientation, creativity and innovation and last but not the least, a sense of urgency. The role of technology is not just to offer a virtual content platform. To be seen as the core of a personalized but yet a scalable experience. Then the objective is to have the learner and experience at the center rather than just content at the center. Content is essential but the learning and the experience with the, of the learner is the core. Technology will be an enabler in powering everything with from intelligent competency, taxonomy, learning management, learner profile management, learning tracking, learner convenience, any device, any time, and seamless third-party integrations, games, simulations, collaboration, communities, analytics-driven recommendations, AI ops, AI assessment, translation, transcripts, voice assistance, verifiable credential storage, unlearning cobots, to name a few. I'm throwing a lot of jargon, but a lot of uh, technology interventions, which all of us can learn, all of us at the of the strata can learn very quickly. And that's where the mobile offers an enormous amount of possibilities. There's another important aspect an enormous amount of knowledge is being created every day in the life of a civil servant as well as the department where the civil servant work. While some of it gets translated into procedures and policies, a significant amount of it remains uncaptured. Over time, much of the institutional knowledge goes away because people move, they take on new jobs, they relocate, they retire. So we need to have a mechanism and an institutional way of capturing the knowledge and building the institutional memory. So iGOD has the potential to evolve as a platform that enables knowledge capture, retention, integration and retrieval. So as part of this strategy, new responsibilities can be added to the entire gamut of things that is expected of a civil servant 
while working in a team so that implicit experiences are converted to explicit learning content and records. So what I have said essentially is newer methods of learning must be integrated into the mission of the Karma Yogi framework and must be led internally. Technology will only play the role of an enabler. The role of technology is to enable, but the individuals in collaboration have to deliver what I spoke about. Now let me touch upon one of the most important areas of research, data analytics and data-driven decision-making. I think the availability of digitally generated data and computational algorithms to analyze it essentially provide new ways of solving complex problems and delivering services. The data-driven decision-making must become the new norm essentially centered on understanding, analyzing, organizing, and sharing data. Using data to respond to problems and promote evidence-led policy making. Understanding, interpreting, and using data to make informed decisions and embedding a data culture in the organization. All of us must believe in the data as it is gathered and the volume of data that has been gathered is immense. In this regard, the public officials must engage diverse stakeholders to create solution and boost the importance of data and information collection as part of the any role, any public function or initiative. To summarize, data-driven decision-making must essentially become the default. Now, another important aspect I wanted to touch up based on my learnings over the last five decades is the importance of mentorship, learning from the private sector. I think mentoring any officer by a senior civil servant or a retired civil servant or veterans from the corporate world with impeccable credentials should be institutionalized and given more importance. That's a knowledge, that's a gold mine which we cannot afford to not use and we must be very, very welcoming in using such experiences. To expand the scope of continuous learning for all civil servants, the government <coughs> can introduce deputation to private organization, whether they are micro, small, medium or large, non-governmental or grassroots organizations. In many countries such as the United States and France, we have seen practices of civil servants being permitted to work in the private sector as well as in other non-governmental institutions while retaining a lien in the government service. The deputation should not be as observers or as overseers, but as learners where civil servants work as employees when they have gone to another organization for a specified period. What is the purpose of such deputation should be to learn the modern management practices, acquire domain knowledge, and experience innovations and best practices. And what we are saying is to imbibe adaptability and learnability. The competency development and learning ecosystem that we are essentially trying to build at the IGOT Karma Yogi is comparable to the learning ecosystem we have built over the years at a number of corporate leading information technology companies. We've been able to democratize learning, democratize learning and career progression successfully at an organization level with the help of technology interventions. Today, there are over 500 future role-based capability development paths available to mid-level associates. Over 70,000 mid-level associates, which means 10 to 20 years of experience, have been transformed to become next generation consulting leaders. The metric shows 7,100 plus courses. They are completed per hour. 2,500 plus competencies built per hour and 985 plus certifications accepted or granted per hour. 
Exposure to such self-driven and fast-paced learning environment is bound to inspire people to embrace self-learning as a way of life. Self-learning, continuous learning, and a culture of learning if you institutionalize within yourself, sharing that kind of a behavior, sharing that kind of a connectivity becomes a way of life. And that's the transformation where all of us, every single person is aligned to the same goal, namely to provide a level of service to the citizens which is in their eyes acceptable and their experience is unquantifiable and it's a scale problem which we are addressing. At the same time, when you look at the startups across India, they are working on a number of innovative solutions to address problems, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in education, whether it's in waste management, sustainability, communication, so on and so forth. There are startups working on auto detection of diseases through medical imaging working on efficient waste management, developing sensors to measure air quality index, building language translation tools and so on. I can go on and on and go on, go on and on, but see the kind of power of this technology and the innovation and the entrepreneurial energy, and that's the kind of thing we want to bring. Exploring these innovations and finding opportunities for collaboration with these startups can go a long way in addressing problems around us at scale. So, in summary, individuals will greatly benefit if guided by a mentor who is a veteran in his or her field. Exposure to private sector workings will be necessary to expand perspectives. Collaboration with startups will lead to new solutions and outcomes. The way forward and conclusion is the last thing which I want to talk about. Culture is one of the biggest barriers to digital transformation. But we cannot simply reinvent or create a culture. It happens over a period of time through incremental changes and advances. Therefore, the single most important job is to create the right environment for a culture of digital transformation to flourish by supporting modeling behaviors that essentially reinforce this. These models are often built from ground up rather than top down. By giving teams on the front line the freedom to ideate and innovate and upskill, leaders can help shape organizational culture for the greater good, benefiting citizens, employees and stakeholders. So, I got six key messages for every person in the skill system or civil service ecosystem. Align goals across the civil service hierarchy through a balanced scorecard approach. Establish a robust enterprise agile change management with incremental delivery and change management capability at all levels. Make citizens first experiences machine-first processes and data-first decisions as the foundational pillars of every major initiative. Explore all opportunities to create a government-private sector academia partnership ecosystem. Build open data platforms. Enable fluid movement of experts and avoid reinventing the wheel. Make every civil servant accountable for their capability and link is to an objective essential. Have a transparent roadmap for career and rewards, driving a performance-oriented culture. Celebrate small successes, widely recognizing the heroes and teams public publicly through senior leaders, officials, personal time. To conclude, to conclude, a cultural shift is what we need where collaboration, commitment to excellence, sharing and caring, citizen centricity, inclusivity and sustainability take center stage where digital technologies are seen as an enabler of innovation, knowledge creation and as a means for productivity and capability enhancement. This transformation process and the end is a journey and not a destination to create a virtual cycle of learning and action. 
So the point is, you are both a receiver and a contributor in this journey. Now the end goal is to take India's governance and public service capabilities to newer heights. We'll be the first in the world to attempt such a scale and all of us in this journey aligned together will make it happen in the shortest possible time. I hope each and every one of you will find the journey exciting and wholeheartedly be a part of the Karmayogi mission to realize the highest potential for yourself and the country. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you.